Hey guys, it's Songbird, and today I want to start giving some reviews for um, the items that I've used on trail. Uh, I want to give actual reviews of things that I've actually used, um, and not just for a day or two or on an overnight. This is for like a month and a half, two, three months at a time. So we're going to go through the pack here in a second, and I'm going to read off notes from my lighter pack uh, webpage. If you haven't seen that yet, uh, check out the link down below. All right, so this is the Appalachian Ultralight Balloon Pack. This is an ultralight uh, pack. I would even say super ultralight pack. The pack is made of Cuban fiber. Uh, it's frameless, and it comes in at a weight of 6.25 ounces. Um, the original pack that I got had some issues where these shoulder straps were only attached um, right where the um, shoulder straps came in contact with the bag. Um, this second version that was sent to me by Cody at Appalachian Ultralight, um, when I told him that my first one uh, was breaking down, uh, was fixed by uh, a bolstered shoulder strap here. Um, it spreads the weight out over a larger area. I think that's exactly what needed to happen. Plus, there's this darker reinforcement tape here on the back. The balloon pack has a really nice big pocket here. Um, this holds everything from my bivy and my rain gear, um, any quick access items that I might need. Uh, this pocket doesn't have a drainage hole at the bottom. In fact, none of the pockets do. And that's one thing I was worried about with this bag, but with the tightness of the elastic here when the bag is packed, uh, very little water actually gets down into this uh, hole here and the top of the pack is small enough the way that I pack it that it isn't really collecting a lot of rainwater. In addition to that with the use of my poncho tarp the poncho covers this small pack very easily so I don't have to worry about water hitting my pack directly. I've got two layers of waterproofing. Cuban fibers waterproof and my poncho which I'll talk to you about in the next video is waterproof as well. So that's two layers of waterproof protection for my sleeping equipment, um, my worn insulation, and all of that. As you can see, you can see the orange here of my Helium 2 jacket from Outdoor Research through this Cuban fiber material. This is a very lightweight, thin material, um, and I kind of like being able to see through it. But this thin material is going to be um, pretty damaged by anything abrasive, uh, setting it down on rocks, dragging it around on sheltered floors. Uh, the puncture resistance and the tear resistance I think is pretty good on Cuban fiber. If you look at tests on YouTube, um, or they'll put a nail through it and try to pull. Um, it's, it's pretty good, it's pretty tough stuff, but the wearing down over time, the abrasion, um, hasn't been good to Cuban fiber for me. Now where you see the most wear on any backpack is going to be right here on the bottom. Cody has improved the design, I think, of the balloon pack by adding a patch here of stronger fabric. I think this is his aerobic material. And I've looked at the bottom and the bottom of the pack and the balloon pack continues Cuban fiber all the way down. Um, but then there's this patch that's sewed on top. So there's actually a double layer here on the bottom. Um, the number one place of wear for any backpack is going to be right here um, because it's set down and balanced against things. When I was using the older version, I did not have any problems with the, the, light, the little bit lighter older version. I didn't have any problems with the uh, bottom wearing through. So one of the things that I've learned to do to avoid wear to this is to set my pack down on this back flat big pocket. Um, where you have a flat, you know, s similar material, strong, durable, um, and you're worried about the bottom wearing through over time, I'd say it's better to use this patch of material here and set your bag down so that um, any wear or waterproof failure isn't really going to affect the contents of your bag. You've got that extra layer of protection here, and maintaining the waterproofing of a Cuban fiber bag is more important, I think, and I don't think that this pocket is going to stop working simply because it gets a few holes in it. A lot of these back pockets are actually made of mesh. And honestly, um, it, it doesn't need to be waterproof at all. I started using the back pocket uh, instead of the bottom of my bag when the bottom of my Hyperlite bag, I had a Hyperlite, uh, I have a Hyperlite Southwest 2400 
that I've gutted and stripped down as light as possible. But there are a lot of little holes that I've had to patch with duct tape on the bottom of the bag and on the inside um, to maintain the waterproofing of that bag. Um, at the time that I had that bag, I didn't have the poncho tarp. And what I, when I was using that bag on trail, I didn't have the poncho tarp. So not using the poncho tarp with that other bag, water would come down and seep in from the bottom or I'd set it down and it'd roll onto its kind of like this from sitting on the back because of how it was packed and water would seep in through the little holes in the bottom. Duct tape helped that. Uh, Gorilla tape would have been better, but that's what I had at the time. All right, so um, also for the Balloon Pack 2.0, he has reinforced all the points where fabric meets and where, especially where there's um, elastic, like stretch cord, shock cord. So you see all the places where the shock cord attaches have been reinforced. See there's reinforcement here where the, um, where the shoulder straps come down and meet the uh, back of the bag. There's reinforcement again here and the use of the D-rings. Use of the D-rings at the shoulders has allowed the bag to move much more freely when it's on my back. And I think that that has reduced the amount of wear that this spot has taken. See the shoulder straps on the balloon pack have gotten much wider and more contoured. And uh, that's something that I didn't really mind from the old pack. My pack weights get so low um, that it hasn't really been a problem. Um, but I think that the wider straps are nice uh, just for that first day out of town when you can feel the entire weight of the world on your shoulders. You've got five days of food, uh, you got full water leaving town maybe, and um, you're just, you're really weighed down. It's nice to have a little bit wider shoulder strap. Um, and the way that this ends up riding on me is that the widest parts are in the place of contact. So they don't shift around a lot on me. They don't rub my shoulders. Uh, and that was something that happened with the fixed shoulders before. Uh, this free moving design means that this is going to be where all the movement happens and not like on my skin, which I really appreciate. I don't see that happening now with this more bomb proof uh, piece of tape here, this fabric that's sewn in to reinforce that area. And with the D-rings taking a lot of that pressure out of that fabric. The, uh, the front side is Cuban fiber, like the rest of the bag, and it's got these support straps woven in here. And uh, these are sewn through, um, and you've got a bunch of handy little, you know, molly loops here. You can move the chest strap up and down. I've just left it where it was when I got it. It's pretty much perfect. Um, I'm thinking about adding a pouch to uh, put my phone in, uh, maybe having a little uh, thing for my knife or something like that. But um, I haven't really had anything strapped to the shoulder straps so far. This front panel is waterproof, and this back panel is mesh, kind of foamy mesh, and it's very nice and thick and soft, but you'll notice that uh, moisture droplets will be visible. As you hike, your uh, perspiration, your, um, your heat that's coming off of your body will get trapped underneath here. Um, it hasn't been uncomfortable for me. It hasn't gotten like crazy hot or anything, but you do notice it. Um, and when these straps get wet, they take a little bit longer to dry out than they would if they were fully mesh. It hasn't bothered me very much, and I don't know if it's even an issue, but it's something that I've noticed that water does get stuck under here, and they eventually dry out, and they don't get really stinky or anything. So right here, at the top of the bag, there's a hang loop, and um, it's a very small little loop. You can get your thumb through it up to the knuckle. It's not tiny. Um, but it's sewn into the uh, more bomb-proofed kind of shoulder strap attachment here. Now, this loop doesn't have a darker piece of fabric behind it, like a big piece of tape that's sewn into to, to make it stronger. So I have very little confidence in these loops. On the old bag, it was sewn, I think, directly on if there was one at all. It might have been smaller but I just felt like picking it up by this loop would rip it out of the bag. So I have very little confidence in that top loop there. Um, you can see it. Just because it, 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 looks, it, looks it looks very light and flimsy. Um, it's much better on this pack, but I do not use this to pick the pack up. Um, I, just, I think that that's a surefire way to rip the seam there again, so I'm, I'm not going to do that. I pick the pack up 
like this. I hold it like a baby. It is my baby. Um, and I just, I wanna, I wanna protect the integrity of that piece of fabric. All right, so the pockets on the balloon pack are nice. You see that the um, reinforcement points here with the darker tape behind the fabric are very tough looking and bomb proof. Um, I guess in a previous version, this never happened with mine that didn't have this before, but I guess in a previous version, there were problems with the uh, force on the fabric damaging that seam there. Doesn't seem like it was gonna be a problem for me using it very carefully with, uh, as I always do with my ultralight gear. If you have one set of gear when you're out there. So these pockets do an excellent job of holding smart water bottles. Um, the one liter bottles fit in here. They've never fallen out on me, even with my Sawyer filter attached, which I can't show you now because it's coming in the mail. I got it for my birthday. In the first version of the pack, I noticed that the bottles would lean forward, cant forward because of this cut and they would kind of poke my back a little bit. It's not anything painful or anything, it'd just be annoying, so I'd flip the back, the bottle back constantly. In the 2.0, I don't know if he's moved the angle at all, but the bottle doesn't seem to do that anymore on, on, the, um, on the clean bottle side. Now when I throw the full-size bottle, you can see it's dirtier, when I throw the bottle with the Sawyer on top, it still wants to lean forward sometimes and it'll, it'll touch my back. But maybe once or twice a day with the Sawyer bottle, I'll notice that it'll shift forward and I'll have to scoot it back or something with my shoulder, or I'll have to um, like push, push back on it a little bit with my hand to keep it from bugging me. Again, these pockets don't have drain holes, so um, if it rains significantly and I don't have my poncho on, which I usually have my poncho on, but if I just had a rain jacket in this, I would have to uh, take everything out of the pockets at the end of the day and make sure that the water got out of there. Uh, but the external pockets of the bag, I'm not worried about water seeping in from being in contact with the Cuban fiber. I know this Cuban fiber is going to hold up. It's not going to just soak through. I'm fairly confident that if I just put this bag on a puddle with all my gear in it and came back an hour later, it would be fine. This, this is an amazing material. I love Cuban fiber. Um, you don't want to push it, but, uh, but I, I know that this can perform. I've seen it perform for me in the past. But it's got a nice roll top here, um, which adds significantly to the internal space of the bag. This is a 30 liter pack. Now I only ever really use it to about here. I haven't had it filled up to here, um, but I guess if you want to um, fluff your sleeping bag out, like if I want to have more space for my synthetic quilt this, this time around this summer, then it's nice to be able to use that space and not over compress your gear, you know? So one thing about the balloon pack is that I almost think it's a little too big. Uh, better to have the space and not need it. Um, and honestly, this isn't something that is a deal breaker at all. But um, I hate having to roll down so much fabric when I pack my pack up to, um, to clamp it. I don't, I don't like having all that extra stuff. I wish I just had a shorter version that I could roll three times and flip over and not have all this excess. Uh, super ultralight problems, right guys? The top of this bag here, and I'll come forward to show you. The top of the roll top here is uh, two pieces of Velcro, male and female, and they have a very nice connection. Uh, the male side isn't very grabby, the loop side, the hook side isn't very grabby, which is nice. Um, it works perfectly for what it is but it's not super loud. You need to get into your bag at night, and once the bag's broken in, it's not gonna crinkle too loud, and you're not gonna wake everybody up. You don't have to feel too bad. There's these two little tabs sewn in here, um, which I haven't found to be all that necessary. I just kind of grab and, and pull, but it's kind of nice, I guess, if you're wearing gloves to be able to grab the tabs. And you see how this fabric is held up from the rolling. It's absolutely fine. Here's an example of the stitching that he does here, but it looks like it's maybe adhe adhesive here or a tape piece, and then it's overlapping by a pretty significant amount. The clip is uh, kind of nice. It's about the smallest clip that I would go with without it being too fiddly, and it's got plenty of strength. I've never been worried about it coming off, um, and I, I have used these clips hundreds of times, and these plastic pieces have never broken or anything. So the chest strap here is attached to this molly webbing that I was talking about before. And it has the same small clip 
as the roll top does on the top of the bag. Now the chest strap is uh, made of the same webbing as is used for the molly strips. It's attached to the molly strips here where there's these little loops for you to attach gear and to move the shoulder strap up and down. And uh, this chest, chest strap has worked perfectly for me. It's got a little bit of elastic here so you can tighten it to the elastic point and it kind of auto adjusts and it, it, it flexes with you. It doesn't restrict your breathing or anything. This chest strap is really nice for keeping the bag kind of in one place on your back. Uh, you don't have the hip belt on this pack so there is going to be a little bit of movement, but with such a light pack weight, getting down into the five pound, six pound range, um, anything under six and a half, seven, I've not had a problem at all with it shifting around all day. Uh, even when doing more like three point climbing, like through the lemon squeeze and stuff, it's been perfectly fine. You see that the um, shoulder straps are attached with this Glow wire here is what it looks like, reflective glow wire. And I'm thinking about changing this out for some orange glow wire just for fun. But it's got some nice cord locks here that you adjust with. And they can kind of be a little bit of a pain. They can be a little fiddly. Um, they hold on really tight. Um, getting them adjusted is kind of annoying. But that said, they do not move once you put them where you want them. So I'm thinking about... Um, further lighting, lightening my pack by using this wire or replacing it with my orange glow wire, probably using this wire, um, having it rigged up so I can take it on and off easily and use it as part of my tarp setup. The idea is that I would use this piece of cordage as one of my guy lines. I would put one of my guy lines here in place of this maybe, and then I, uh, I'm not carrying cordage, extra cordage. Now, uh, it's kind of hard to show you the diameter of the bag. I could, I could pick it up and hold it like this for you. You can see about how wide it is versus my chest. It's from peck to peck. It's not shoulder width at all. Um, and fully packed, it's a little bit wider, but it's still not shoulder width. Um, I can fit one arm around it here and touch my armpit very comfortably. The bag can move through, so it's about that much space. Um, I'm about five, ten and three quarters, so it gives you an idea of maybe how big around the pack is. It's pretty small. Here's a here's my laptop. See, it's not as wide as my laptop, and that's a 13-inch screen. So it's a very small bag, um, but it fits everything really nicely, especially if you've got that low volume here. So, anyways, I really like knowing that when it rains, my gear isn't going to get wet inside of this pack. And I really like the idea that um, anything gross and nasty, like a dirty um, bivy or a wet tarp or a wet rain jacket, uh, any dirty socks or anything, if I throw it in here, it's not gonna penetrate through and it's not gonna get into my clean stuff and my, my contents of my backpack are gonna be safe. And this stuff back here is gonna be well protected from uh, damage from like sticks and stuff, anything coming by. The mesh is nice for drying stuff out, but I like knowing that um, my gear is safe. I don't want holes punched in my in my ground sheet. I don't want, you know, snags on my rain jacket or anything. I don't want that dirt and abrasion getting in from the outside. I like also knowing that I don't need a stuff sack. This operates as a stuff sack. It's a big, big pocket. Um, I can fit my bivy, my poncho, and my rain gear, and my cordage. I, I can honestly fit half the volume of my gear in here if I need to. <clears throat> now, one thing with the um, balloon pack and other frameless packs like of its kind, there's no panel here. Some, some frameless packs have a little foam inside. This pack is stripped down, nothing, you know, super ultralight, right? So if you have your food bag back here, uh, ramen noodles or um, you know like something pointy like protein bars whatever they're gonna dig into your back so how you pack these packs is to put all your soft stuff or your sleeping pad anything that you can make like kind of a foam like cushy uh, insulation stuff back panel here is really nice and that keeps it so that your food is towards the outside of the pack which normally would be a no-no but with these, with these pack weights, it's so small that it's not like it's cranking back on you or anything. If you do have a hip belt, you can pack your bag tight enough, and roll it down and make it into a brick. That will allow you to use the pack itself as the frame. It will transfer the weight of the load to your hips. 
Anyways, so that's the Appalachian Ultralight Balloon Pack uh, from Cody at Appalachian Ultralight. I really very much enjoy it. Uh, I don't want to use any other pack. I haven't found anything lighter. And I look forward to using this pack when I go back out on trail with my sub five pound super ultralight base weight where I'm going to be finishing the final five, 600 miles of trail. Stay tuned and I'll show you guys in the next video my poncho tarp, which has done more than any other single piece of gear to get me on the super ultralight track, along with the rest of my gear that I'm bringing with me this summer. I'm gonna go through my favorite items one by one and show you what has made me successful on the 1700 miles of the trail that I've hiked so far. Thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe maybe if you wanna see more videos and uh, let me know if you liked it in the comments below. If you don't like the video, hit the dislike button. It really helps if you just, there's any user engagement at all. Um, check out some of my links in the description and see you in the next video on my super ultralight finishing the Appalachian Trail. Ooh, I went full Minnesota.